So Chuck, I got more to tell you about the moon. Okay. We did a whole explainer on moon lore, that was fun, yeah, but I, was I'm fun. not done. Good. Okay. I'm, I'm all about done. it. I, all right. The moon is so mysterious for so many people for so many reasons, and it's so, I mean, and it's so romantic. Yes, it's, and, a, it's, you know, every, it's all of the above. It's spooky yeah, and romantic. It's, it's spooky, mo romantic. It's poetic in many respects. Yes, yes. You know? Yes. It's in so many paintings, like, you know. Yeah, it's, and, and it's, 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 a, it's a fundamental part of the symbol for Islam. Is the crescent moon with, crescent with, moon with Venus in the sky next right. to it. So, yeah, the moon is important. Yeah, and very much. So a couple of things. Uh, there's an old saying. I did not know that was Venus. In well, that okay, in it's, that, it's in an that. evening or morning star. Right, and which would if, be. If it's planet. bright enough, it's generally going to be Venus. Venus, right. But the, um, it's, it's rare that there's another really cool star next to it. And Venus is always in the sky, yeah. either with the waning crescent or the waxing crescent. So yes. typically that's Venus. In practice, yeah. it's Venus. And by yeah. the way, it's really cool to see it when it's a certain time of night and it really isn't quite like all the way dark. And it's so it's bright. It's called twilight, Chuck. Oh, Use the that, word. No. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call it when it's night but not quite dark? <laughs> Did I just invent something? <laughs> oh my. And you know this, this stuff around us at all times that, you know, it goes in your lungs and you push it out. <laughs> and that big yellow ball that gives us light Good. that thing Chuck, i'm so glad you woke up today yes <laughs> out of your 40-year coma yes oh that's what God. you did yes but twilight uh, venus at twilight is i mean it's and and you can see it with the naked eye and it's like it l really looks like somebody turned on a light in the sky it's really yeah nice. yeah and and a little known fact because venus orbits the sun closer than we orbit the sun okay venus will never stray too far away from wherever the sun is on the sky it's uh, not going to end up behind us with the sun in front of us right it's going to be near the sun so that's why you'll typically notice venus just after sunset right. in twilight right. or just before sunrise gotcha. and so in, in evening twilight so dusk Right. And then the, the poetic other side of that would be dawn. Right. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So more about the moon. Uh, all evidence suggests and all theoretical understanding of the formation of the moon, helped, by the way, by rocks we brought back from, by the Apollo program Sweet. to study and look at, we get a sense of the origin of that place. Do you guys remember that? That's why America was great. <laughs> when we did stuff, you know, <laughs> Because we didn't mind our tax dollars being used to make us the greatest nation on earth. Merkin. I'm just saying. Merkin, yeah. You know. But go ahead. So, so we brought back rocks and, we've, and we were able to... Yes, analyze them and the realize that the moon doesn't have much iron in it. Okay. And a, an object that size should have much more iron in it than it does. So how do you make a whole object that has hardly any iron? So you make it out of a out of a collision with Earth, but it sideswipes Earth after Earth has already sunk its iron to its core. Right. So, so that... when Earth was molten, heavy stuff falls to the middle, light stuff floats to the top. Gotcha. Compared to iron, rocks are light. So all the rocks floated and the iron sunk. Iron, nickel, gold, cadmium, all the, the heavy elements. They're down there in the core. Okay, right. so now Earth has pre-sifted the elements. Pre-sifted. Now you have a, a Mars-sized impactor that sideswipes the Earth, scattering Earth's crust into a ring around the Earth. That Mars-sized impactor keeps going, but the debris mess that it left continues to orbit the Earth. And the slightly larger bits of this have more gravity than the slightly smaller bits, so they'll attract more objects and they get bigger. And as they get bigger, they have even more gravity, and they get even bigger and bigger, and it's a runaway exponential growth. The big get bit bigger, and the little ones get... Eaten. Eaten, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> we think over not much time, a matter of months, if not only just a few years, Earth had a ring, not much unlike, not mu not unlike like Saturn, Saturn. And that ring coalesced into the moon. And that moon was 20 times closer 
in the sky than it is today. Oh, wow. Well, that must have looked beautiful. Yeah, so imagine that. Just imagine that. It's 20 times wider. Imagine yeah. like Moonrise. It was like... Yeah, that's, that's very Star Wars, you know? Like <laughs> you, you're standing there in the desert and you see like, you know, a giant a, a orb a in the sky. And you need music sky. to go with that. And that exactly. would just totally complete the scene. Yeah. So it turns out tidal forces are very sensitive to distance. Very sensitive. In other words, not emotionally sensitive, but if you change the distance by a little bit, it'll have a much bigger effect than you'd otherwise think on the strength of the tides. Okay, now I can't get over thinking about emotionally sensitive tidal <laughs> forces <laughs> where all of our oceans are just like, where you go? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? You said did, it's you, it's not me, but I know. Did, did I deserve this? Why did, right. <laughs> you just going to throw away everything we had <laughs> as you slowly drift away. <laughs> You're so distant. I don't understand <laughs> why we don't communicate anymore. You're so distant. <laughs> All we have to do is talk. Why are you so distant? <laughs> There's a space between us. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know how to fill this chasm between us. <laughs> I can't do all the work here, okay? <laughs> I'm Earth, and I can't do all the work. Chuck, how many hours of therapy have you been in with your wife? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> By the way, I'm the one saying that in therapy, not her. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 here, so mathematically because you can be mathematically sensitive okay i just want to broaden your use of the term sensitivity so the moon uh the the, the mathematical sensitivity of tidal forces goes as the cube of the distance oh sweet okay so in other words if it just went as the distance okay if it was like 20 times closer then the tides would be like 20 times higher than they are today but no does it go as the distance squared? That would mean the tides would be 20 times 20 higher than, than today. What's 20 times 20? Oh, I don't know, 400? Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> don't you pull out a calculator. You on this show, you're going to tell me what 20 times 20 is. <laughs> Let me see, hold on. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay, so. you got 400. However, Tidal forces go as the cube of the distance. So the cube is, it, you multiply by itself three 20, times. By so 20, by 20, 20 times 20, that's 400, mm -hmm. times another 20. <clears throat> so right. 400 times 20, that gets you 8,000. 8, so the tides, the oceanic tides on Earth, raised by the moon when the moon first formed, were 8 thousand times higher wow than they are today look at that and 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 look at that we're trying to get back there with with global warming that's wonderful <laughs> that's a different problem yeah tell me about okay, it. okay so now watch what happens tides sloshing on and off the shores there's friction between the solid earth and the moving water okay and so earth's rotation back then was actually faster than it is today. All right. Depending on how far back you, you go, you get like an 18, 20 hour day for Earth, not 24 wow. hours. Look at that. Okay. So we have a big moon, higher tides, faster rotating Earth. But the tides are so ferocious, Earth is slowing down. Oh, man. Because of it. And in response, the moon's orbit is increasing, it is spiraling away from the Earth. Cool. And it has been doing that ever since. We still have sloshing of tides on the shores. Right. Earth's rotation rate is still slowing down. The moon is still spiraling away from the Earth, but much slower than it once was. Mm -hmm. Why are you killing me softly? If you're going to leave, <laughs> just leave. I don't understand it. <laughs> oh, by the way, we 
had tidal influence on the moon. Okay. The moon at one time rotated like anybody else in the in the in the solar system. You'd see the front side, the back side, the left side, the right side. But our tidal forces on the moon slowed its rotation down until we locked it. We locked the moon's rotation around the earth. That's why I'm leaving. Because <laughs> see, you only see one side of me. I'm a complex person. <laughs> But it seems like, you know, when we're together, I can only show you one face. <laughs> Check. I... This sounds like a TV series. <laughs> <laughs> well, then go then. Uh, Why don't you just go? <laughs> Why must you make it so torturous? I, I've been drifting from you for so, all these years. <laughs> exactly. You didn't feel me drifting away? I mean, seriously. <laughs> Chuck, you can't make a hole. <laughs> Psychological oh relationship out of this. And you know what this show is called? As the world turns. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It would be I'm authentically. It would be the best name the show best there ever was. Ever. Okay. Oh, God. That may be the stupidest thing I've ever done on this show. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. So, so the point is, we tidally locked the moon because we have stronger tides on the moon than the moon has on us. Right. And so moon just got locked. We slow down its rotation, locked in on it. It only shows one face to us. That's and the other face we've never seen until we orbited it with spacecraft. The moon is trying to do the same thing to us. It wants to slow us down so much that we only show one face to the moon. And the day that happens, we will be in what's called a double tidal lock. Nice. Excellent. You go. That's a nice dance. I like it. Yeah, yeah. So that's so that's what it looks like, Chuck. Hey, man, that, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that's not moon lore. That's just that's, sort of moon facts. Hey, listen, that is that is awesome. I mean, <laughs> at the moon and the earth uh, locked in a dance. So I have to repeat my one perfect sentence that I've ever written in my life. Okay. May I repeat it for you? Please. Okay. The rotating planets orbit the sun like pirouetting dancers in a cosmic ballet choreographed by the forces of gravity wow damn <laughs> oh, you wrote that That's yeah <laughs> oh okay <laughs> uh, all right chuck we got to end it there okay enough uh, of them we'll give the moon a rest okay <laughs> okay and the earth moon family <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> we'll, we'll lead them to their drama. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This has been an explainer video. Keep looking up. Okay. Uh, by, by the way, do you know what the name of our moon is? Oh, no. The moon. How did that happen? Yeah, yeah. So Everybody the moon... gets these great names and we, and we have... Moon. Moon. No, no, it has a name. It's called Luna. Oh, that makes sense. And 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 that's funny because in certain languages they call it Luna. Yeah, yeah, Luna. And yeah. Earth has a name. Okay. Earth. It's called Terra. Oh yeah. Okay. And we're called Terrans in most sci-fi films. Oh die? yes, we are. Okay. Yes, we are called Terrans. And the sun has a name. Okay. It's called Sol. S O L. Nice. Yeah. So if you just Latinized everything, we have Sol, Terra. And you have Luna, you got all the planets, and everybody's one happy family of cultural expression and diversity. Awesome. <laughs>